So Telltale game shut down, and that sucks. It especially sucks for the people who really invested in that narrative type gameplay that Telltale specialized in that you really can't find anywhere else. They said on their statement that they blamed lack of sales, and I have no access to any financials or anything like that, so I don't know what they were spending their money on, if they just expanded too quickly with too many properties, licensing fees, I have no idea. But there are two reasons from my perspective, as a consumer, of why they failed. Now, if you just want a quick 30 second video and then you want to move on your way, then the answer is episodic structure and choice. So there you go, have at it, you're welcome. Uh, but if, to get deeper into it, the first one is that people have discovered, especially with the later seasons of I believe The Walking Dead, that the choices that you're making in these games didn't really matter. Regardless of what you chose, no one was dying, no one was staying alive, it all culminated at the same point. And that made people feel bad. I mean, you're going through, you know, a minimalist gameplay, uh, mostly story-based game, where you're trying to keep survivors alive and making decisions and choices to try to figure things out and, you know, try to keep people happy. Maybe you're prioritizing one over the other and you want to see the consequences of what's going to happen. I mean, the game itself comes out and says, X person will remember this. And for that to end up with, oh yeah, jokes, it turns out there's no big change happening in your world at all, regardless of what you chose, it feels bad, and it might have soured some people on it. Now, the big one is the episodic structure. Episodes have always existed, I mean, it's mostly prevalent in TV shows, but even there, people have changed, consumers have changed. We no longer want to sit at a TV weekly to watch an episode and then come back the next week and see what's going on. I mean, Netflix shows it itself, is that people want to sit down and they want to binge through, say, seven hours of TV all at once, and then they'll move on and do something else. And games, for the most part, have been like that for a long time. You sit down with a game and it's their start to finish, and then you can play through and you can take breaks in between, but you're immersed from the stories from beginning to end. The problem with the episodes that Telltale Games put out is that you get that first episode, then you have to wait, say, one to three months before another episode gets released, and then you come back to it and you say, huh, where was I, what was I doing, do I need to start from the beginning again, or can I just push through and that immersion is lost, which is doubly bad for a narrative-focused game. So the big thing that happens is, say, when it first came out, the episode 1 was released, everyone loved it, everyone picked it up, and then they waited eagerly for episode 2. So episode 2 comes out, and then, because that excitement's still there, they play it, and then they go on and finish it. And then another couple months happen, and episode 3 comes out, and at this point they're thinking to themselves, huh, well, do I just buy the pass that gives me access to the whole season so that way I can just get them all when they come up without having to worry about making another $10 purchase every X amount of months? Or even worse, do I need to go back to the beginning constantly to try to remember all the minute choices I had made? And what most people, because people inherently want to have the most convenient option, are going to go, okay, well, I'm already invested in this season, I'm going to play it through to the end and go episode by episode, but then when season 2 comes out, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to sit down, I might buy the season pass just to have all the episodes delivered to me easily, or I might just wait. I'll wait till the entire season's finished and then I'll pick it up then and then I'll play it from start to end, no problem. Now, that's really bad for Telltale because they're set up in a way where they are expecting you to purchase every X amount of months for each episode and that's how they keep themselves afloat. But it's really inconvenient for people because now they, instead of just buying, pressing buy once and not having to worry about it anymore, they instead need to, you know, constantly be reminded, oh yeah, the new episode's out, I need to get this new episode. And with large branches of time between them, it becomes a lot harder for them. It becomes doubly worse because over time, people are going to be less inclined to be like, okay, I'll just buy, you know, all the episodes right now, with, like as a pre-order, and then play it when it comes out. But instead they go, oh, you know what, I'll just wait till they all come out first. And then they all come out, but by then we've moved on. There's some other game or some other, you know, movie or something else that occupies our time that we show up and we go, okay, I'll play it later. I'll play, I want to really want to play this first. So I'll play it later. And it gets pushed back. And then you go, oh man, okay, I'll play it now. But oh wait, I really like this other new game that has just come out. And it's really bad for us. Well, I mean, it's great for consumers in general because there are just so many games there to occupy our attention. I mean, personally, I have 57 games, I think, on my Steam wishlist currently. And that's not including the games I follow. And a lot of games are going to fall through the cracks. And the way this ended up going is that, well, for Telltale, they couldn't afford to have any of their players fall through the cracks. And they did. Now, what's really interesting is what's going to happen from here on out with Telltale Gone. 
I mean, ideally someone's going to come in and fill the void that was left, because clearly there's a demand for these types of games. The question is, well, are people really receptive to the types of way that they are trying to sell, which is episodic? And I personally don't think that's the case at all. I don't think episodic games are really going to catch on, and I don't think they're a smart way to try to do business. But I mean, obviously you have to try and fail in order to see whether or not that's the case. Ultimately, it's a loss for us, it's a loss for Telltale, and it's a loss for all those invested players who really wanted to see their storylines come to an end. And, well, we can only hope that next time that's what we get.